Hello guys, what's up? Today we are going to discuss about pancreatic pseudocyst. Pseudocyst is collection of amylase rich fluid enclosed in a fibrous and granulation tissue. Lining is fibrous or granulomatous or inflammatory tissue rather than epithelium and that is why it is called pseudocyst. Talking about etiology, we have acute pancreatitis. It is the most common cause. It takes four weeks to form the cyst from acute pancreatitis. The second is pancreatic tumor and the third is chronic pancreatitis. Pathology. The number is usually single but it may be multiple. Here we have the inflammatory exudate, pancreatic secretions which is high in amylase and this is the inflammatory tissue lining which is why it is called pseudocyst this is the stomach so this uh, lies between the stomach and the pancreas where there is a lesser lesser sac it lies in the lesser sac basically which is between the stomach and the pancreas so talking about the complications the infection it may be abscess or sepsis Hemorrhage is another complication. Rupture. If it ruptures inside this gut, it can cause internal fistula. If it ruptures into the peritoneum, it can cause peritonitis. Pressure symptoms. If it presses the bowel, it can cause bowel obstruction. It can press common bile duct, causing obstructive jaundice. Clinical features a Small pseudocyst are painless, discovered and follow up by ultrasound most of the times. Large pseudocyst can cause discomfort and it can present as an upper abdominal swelling. And sometimes the size is that of watermelon. So talking about differential diagnosis, aortic aneurysm can be a differential diagnosis because both of them have pulsations. The aorta is on the left side, left and posterior to the pancreas, and it can emit transmitted pulsations to the pseudocyst. On knee elbow position, the cyst goes downwards. Thus, the transmitted pulsation is removed in case of pseudocyst. But in aneurysm, pulsation is not transmitted one, so pulsation remains the same, even in knee elbow position. So another differential diagnosis is cystic neoplasm, which is very important by history by radiological appearance on CT and by performing fine needle aspiration on endoscopic ultrasound guidance we can distinguish between them we will check the CEA level after FNA it's high in cystic neoplasm and low in pseudocyst but another thing that we can examine from fine needle aspiration is the content amylase. Amylase is very high in case of pseudocyst and it is sometimes high in case of cystic neoplasm but low most of the times. Uh, although high amylase is present in pseudocyst and it is indicated by pseudocyst but it is not diagnostic. Why it is not diagnostic? Because tumor connected with duct 
have similar findings. The cystic neoplasm, if connected with pancreatic duct, will contain high amount of amylase because the secretion enzymes will go directly into the cyst through the connection. So talking about investigations, we have CT, FFNA on ultrasonographic guidance. And if it is not available, we're going to do power cutaneous fine needle aspiration. And another thing we can do is cytology of FFNA. We can check CA level, amylase level, and we can perform cytology. Investigations. So as I already said, CT scan, this is pseudocyst is it is suggested by hypercoagulation barium meal can be done you can see a stressed stomach pushed by the pseudocyst here this is the pseudocyst and this is the stressed stomach on barium meal Endoscopic ultrasonography and fine needle aspiration can be performed, not available for cutaneous FNA, as I told before. ERCP or MSP can be done. You can observe ductal anomalies, connection with duct system, chronic pancreatitis, treatment. must cyst resolves spontaneously so only needed thing is clinical or ultrasound follow-up most of them they resolve spontaneously you don't you don't need to do anything but the indication for intervention are either the cyst is symptomatic either the cyst is presenting with complications or it is a confirmed tumor this all of them are absolute indication for in intervention but pseudocyst that doesn't resolve in six weeks is a suggestive indication i mean it suggests for intervention but it's not absolute indication why six weeks because See, we wait for six weeks to ensure cyst is not resolving spontaneously and to allow development of a strong wall that can hold sutures. Intervention, we have three types of interventions, percutaneous, endoscopic and surgical. Surgical is the gold standard even now. Percutaneous, we have external and there is a risk of infection here so not done and the percutaneous option is transgastric option where we put pigtail catheter under radiologic guidance in endoscopic we can insert a tube drain or we can put a stunt across ampulla so let's discuss about the surgical the gold standard there is two things over here two types of surgery over here one is cysto tumor. we connect the cyst to the jejunum this is the cyst and this is the jejunum we perform a rocks in oil operation this is another operation called cystogastrostomy the first thing we do is we perform an incision on the anterior abdominal wall after that we perform an incision on the anterior wall of the stomach and then in the posterior wall of the stomach and then we perform an 
interlocking sutures and the contents are emptied inside the stomach thus and the rest of the stuffs are closed the anterior wall of the stomach and the anterior abdominal wall is closed at last so now post operatively what happens is the cyst gradually collapses disappears so this is all about pseudo cyst thank you so much for watching uh, next video is about pancreatic adenocarcinoma so don't forget to watch it like give feedback and subscribe